What's up, YouTube? It's our Senate Tech Ninja back at again with another video. And today we're doing the unboxing and first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G. Now, as you know, we are moving into phones now and much more tech in the future. And don't worry, my sticky videos aren't going anywhere. And if you are new to the channel, I wanted to thank you for stopping by because you're seeing one of my talents. So, hopefully I can earn your subscription by the end of this video. So without further ado, let's get on to the unboxing. Okay, ask me, I'm very hyped. But before we get on to the unboxing, which I really can't wait, um, let's talk about the price. So the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 retails for a astonishing $1,800. Bro, what are you talking about, man? It's for the 256 gigabyte model with 12 device of LPDDR5 RAM and uh, $1,900 for the... It's the mind-boggling, eye-popping, all-new... 512 gigabyte model with the same RAM options. And by the way, both come with UFS 3.1. But here's the thing. On Samsung.com, you can get up to $900 off on a qualified device for trading. And at Best Buy, you can get $400 off on a qualified activation. Now, see that respective website square details. So, where is my unboxing knife? Because, yo, I can't take to not open this phone any longer. But, as you know, the box is pretty thin. Why is that? Because Samsung decided to remove all the accessories in the box besides the micro USB type C to C charger and the warranty and stuff information. But let's go. I hear the Galaxy S9 comes with a fast charger. Yeah, but you could just buy a USB C to lightning cable and then also get the fast charging adapter. Oh. Should do the job. Have a great day. And get on to the unboxing. That quality seal. Yo, get the little box knife you already know. Well, it's not a little length. It's not that special. Anyways, let's get this blade before I cut myself in half. Alright, here we go. Where is my <laughs> Yo, okay. Alright, alright. Yo. Oh my god, yo. Alright, okay, let's set this one to the side a little bit. And get to the little cord. And here goes the SIM card tray. Yo, I'm sorry, but yo, I'm just, my heart's pounding because I'm just so damn excited for this phone. Anyways, here goes your micro USB to C C charger. Let's see how long it is, because if it's one of those short ones, I'm gonna be kind of pissed off. One second. Activate beast mode. Ruh. Get that plastic out of here. Okay, now this is. Decent and long. Okay, it's good enough, Samsung. Well, like, um, yo. All right, so let's get this thing out the way and get your, um, your quick start information and stuff. It's in here, no one really cares about that. Put it to the side. So, let's go ahead and get on to, yo. Deep, I'm not, okay, I, all right, all right. I'm really trying not to be a hype beast, but I'm not trying to copy floss either, but yo. All right, let's get the, it's, it's actually mine. And I, I'm coming from the, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, by the way. So that's my first folding phone. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get that little. Get that out of here. No, you know what? I'm gonna keep this plastic because it's so damn special. But here we go, the Samsung Galaxy. Z Fold 3. Yo, it feels. Yo, I heard the springs. I mean, I felt it. Okay. Is there any other plastic on here? We got the. Uh... Yo, it feels like a solid brick of aluminium and glass. This feels so damn premium. Okay, let me go ahead and turn on the device. Okay, first I'm gonna have it closed. Turn on. You, all right, all right, Samsung, you, you can't. Okay, there we go. Let's turn it on. So, probably gonna do some little edits. <laughs> Yo, here we go. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. Yo, this is finally mine. Like, okay. All right, let me go ahead and set up this phone because right now, um, it's not even set up, but Android is starting. But let's go ahead and get to the activation. Welcome sign is here. Hey, but I will see y'all in the next chapter. 
So let's get on to the specs, shall we? Start off with the display. So on the cover screen, we got a LTPO AC Plus 6.2 inch, 120 hertz, Infinity O dynamic AMOLED display with the resolution of 2268 by 832, PPI of 387, and the aspect ratio of 24 by 5 by 9. That's covered in grill glass with this, the latest and greatest in corner. And I have to say, like all Samsung flashlight displays, even though the display is quite narrow, which is really good for one hand to use, it is a bit narrow and it can get a, a pretty crypt over a long period of time. But here's the flex, get it? Because I'm flexing the display. Now, on the main display, we got a 120Hz QXJ Plus Dynamic AMOLED Infinity Flex display with the resolution of 2208 by 1768 with a PPI of 374 with the aspect ratio of 22 by 2 by 18. Let me tell you right now, you feel like a boss every single time you open this phone. I mean, it's just so damn satisfying. I can't get over it. <laughs> but anyways, it is ready to tackle any kind of media or heavy duty task you can throw at it. But let's go on to the cameras, which is a downgrade actually from the Z Fold 2. On the cover screen, oh no, on the main display, it is a 4 megapixel on the display camera that can only record at full HD 1080p at 60 frames per second compared to the Z Fold 2, which can only which can record at 4K 60 frames per second with its 10 megapixel camera. Now on the outside display, we still got the same 10 megapixel camera as we do on the Z Fold 2, but just a bit better due to the newer chip. And on the th main outside, you know, display where all the cameras are, you got three 12 megapixel cameras. One ultra wide to get your sim your cinematic ultra wide shots, which looks pretty damn good. Your main camera, which records the best video quality and takes the best pictures and the camera that you be using most of the time and your 20 megapixel portrait uh, or telephoto lens which makes some um, excellent portrait shots with its bokeh as you say so going on to the processor now it's your typical timeline specs i mean for 1800 it better be so it is the Snapdragon 888 which flies through everything like how your mom does through child support. Just playing. Gotcha, bitch! So, ever since the Snapdragon 855, which my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus had, there's never been really any issues with their processing speed. I mean, yes, there are hiccups, but um, when it comes like after the Snapdragon 845, the chips has been excellent. Like. It's just the capabilities that come along with newer phones, which makes it special. So, going on to charging. So, it supports up to 15 watts of reverse, no, of wireless charging and 4.5 watts of reverse wireless charging, which is pretty slow, but it helps your iPhone users, which I don't understand. It's like, you know, every person that I know that owns an iPhone, their battery is always 20% or lower. Maybe 50%, maybe. I'm just trying to be nice. Hey, but you need to tighten up on that charge phones. But speaking of a battery, it is a 44 milliamp uh, power cell, which is 100 milliamps shorter than a Z Fold 2. But since it has a newer processor, which is more energy efficient, I heard that over you no know, uh, more tech reviewers that the battery life is slightly better. So the number one decided factor for me is one, it is not IPX safe water resistant. So you can put this phone up to 1.5 meters in water and not worry about a thing. But the X and IPX8 stands for no dust resistance. But it does have bristles which can sweep away dust and debris if a little bit gets in there. But I still will be very careful about taking this to the beach or anywhere where you have um, a large amount of dust. And the second reason why I got the Z Fold 3 is because of the S Pen support. So, there are two types of S Pens that work on the Z Fold 3. That is the S Pen 4 edition, which retails for $49.95, and it has all of the S Pen functionality like on your note devices, 
but you don't get the Bluetooth support functionality. But what's special about this S Pen is two things. One, it has a different frequency, so you can use the S Pen on the Z Fold 3 and display. That's right, you can't use it on the outside display because there is no digitizer on the outside display, which in my opinion is halfway thought out, but I guess if you're really trying to take, to take notes, you will take advantage of the bigger canvas. And also the second reason is because of the retractable ball tip. So it is something to the touch compared to all of the other S pens. And it, um, what you call it? So whenever you put too much pressure on it, it sinks into the S pen itself so it can keep from damaging the display. And then there is the S Pen Pro, which retails for a astonishing $99.95 and for a, a S Pen that you can get free with a Galaxy Note 10 Plus or really any note. So um, you can do the exact same things with the Note devices because you get the Bluetooth functionality, but it's also pretty huge, which is more comfortable over a long period of time, but less convenient because you can't fit neither S Pen inside the other device and it comes separate. So it is a add-on accessory, it doesn't come in it, but at the same time, just to be able to come this far by using the PTU um, screen protector is a major improvement over the previous folds. So that is why I chose to get the Z Fold 3. So far, I think phone to phones is a feature, but the Z Fold series has a hard division to become a phone and a tablet, which any two one device can't do. Well, it can do, but it has a hard time doing it because it can't make that perfect at each category. However, how close can the Z Fold 3 get between the sweet balance of perfection between phone and tablet? Well, I don't know yet. I just got the phone. <laughs> but throughout my testing, I would test out every single feature, including flex mode, the ability to um, splitting that by simply folding the phone and so far it's working pretty good so if you have any questions comments or concerns please leave it down in the comment section below and I'll get to that so then earn your subscription or you still need to figure out more because either way I promise to give you the ascendant content however to keep on moving forward I need 1,000 subscribers so I already have my watch hours when it comes to being monetized but only need 280, no, 70 more subscribers at the time of this video to be fully monetized and I'll be able to do my dream job to entertain y'all while giving, you know, these beautiful speakers. And tech in general, I just love it. So do you have your trust in me? Let me know because it all starts by that subscription. So that has been it for this video. I truly thank you for watching. This has been the Ascendant Tech Ninja. I'll catch you next video. Peace out.